Former Governor El Rufai drags Kaduna Assembly to court over probe report. ASU issues two weeks ultimatum to federal government over 2009 agreement implementation. Minor fire at Dangote Refinery put out. And on the foreign scene, President Ruto withdraws controversial bill after anti-tax protest debts. And the details now. Former Governor of Kaduna State, Nasiru El Rufai, has filed a case against the Kaduna House of Assembly seeking to enforce his fundamental human rights. The suit alleges that he was denied a fair hearing during the investigation by the House of Assembly into alleged misuse of public funds and money laundering during his tenure as governor from 2015 to 2023. El Rufai, alongside former commissioners who served under his administration, filed the suit at the Federal High Court in Kaduna. The Kaduna House of Assembly had inaugurated a 13-man ad hoc committee to examine the loans, grants and project implementations during El Rufai's tenure as governor of Kaduna State. The committee's report adopted by the House indicted El Rufai and some key members of his cabinet for alleged corruption in the awards of contracts and management of both domestic and foreign loans obtained by his government. The current House of Assembly set up um, an adult committee to investigate uh, loan and other activities of uh, the formal administration. A lot of witnesses were called and um, they took uh, um, they did hearing and they admitted a lot of documents. But strangely, Malam Nasir Arufai, who, who apparently was the target of the investigative uh, committee, was never invited. The law is very clear. Everybody deserves to be given a hearing. The right to fair hearing is a natural right that kneels into every human being. Malam Nasir Arufai um, was uh, a lot of allegations were made against him. He was not given a hearing at all. As a lawyer about this citizen who believes in the rule of law and who believes that uh, when there are infractions, you need to approach the court. He's here today before the federal court to enforce his right that um, every infraction they alleged he was not given an opportunity to sit his own side of the story. And the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namdi Kanu, has appealed to June to the June 19 ruling of Justice Binten Yako of the Federal High Court in Abuja against his objection to the jurisdiction of the court to subject him to trial. Kanu, through his lead counsel, Aloy Ejimako, filed the notice of appeal at the Court of Appeal in Abuja. Ejimako said the grounds of the objection are seven and mostly pre predicated on provisions of the Constitution, the Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act of 2022, and other pertinent statutes. He said the learned trial judge erred in law and occasioned grave miscarriage of justice against the appellant when the trial court held that the main claim in this application deals with the counts of charge the defendant is facing. And to other development now, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU University of Uyo Branch, has issued a two-week ultimatum to the federal government to honor the 2009 renegotiated agreement it had with the union or risk industrial action. In a public sensitization protest on Wednesday at the University of Uyo Town campus, the chairperson of ASU, Okpayemi Olajide, recalled that in 2022, public universities embarked on eight months strike over the outstanding issues and had to come back to classrooms in obedience to the rule of law. He expressed regrets that two years after, the federal government is not willing to honor the agreement and attend to their demands. The chairperson explained that although the union reached out to relevant authorities to intervene and make government do the needful to avert any disruption to academic activities, there was no positive result, stressing that if after two weeks nothing was done, the union would shut down the universities and send students home. The zonal coordinator of ASU, Calabar Zone, Happiness Uduk, while addressing the protest, disclosed that the federal government still owes lecturers in public schools three and a half months' salary. She noted that public universities are not functioning as expected when compared with the private universities urging the federal government to make deliberate efforts to resuscitate the public educational system. 
Meantime, the Academic Staff Union of Universities has decried what it called the deplorable working conditions faced by its members. The union, which held a protest at the Federal University Kashiri, accused the government of intentionally killing public universities, noting that most of its members are dying due to the inability of the government to pay academic allowances and withheld salaries. Trust TV's Hassan Kuli reports. The union said this is part of its ongoing effort to protect public universities against collapsing. Asu said issues like not funding tertiary institutions and withholding lecturer salaries, among others, are inflicting serious damages on Nigeria's higher education, warning of unpleasant consequences. The union said it is worried about the current deplorable state of its members, noting that most of them are struggling with different health issues due to government's refusal to pay with health salaries for eight months in 2022. We are not happy to close the universities, but we are forced to do so. We are dealing with the government that don't listen, with the government that amicably that is supposed to sit around the table and iron out issues. You can see it, it appears as a very simple thing. The last administration, we had a solid discussion with them. The let Nimi Briggs Committee did a draft agreement was come up between the two parties. But unfortunately, somehow due to some interest, that draft agreement could not come to reality. So our action is basically being forced and it remains at the last, at last, last option. Up till now, in all our engagement with stakeholders, town halls, we are asking if there's any option people touch. Some of the lecturers faulted government failure to improve the working condition of teachers, noting that the development comes with negative impact on both lecturers and students. Many of our members died. We have many professors that we lost across the, in fact, one of the neck that I attended, the rate of death that were reported from various branches is very alarming and this is a result of the poor uh, remuneration in the university a lecturer cannot sustain himself the salary is nothing to talk about and you know that in our cardinal responsibility we have community community service we have research some of our researches are consuming our our our, our, our resources Therefore, we can no longer continue to sustain ourselves. A lot of brain drain. You see most of our professors, doctors, not just in the academics, in other fields, engineers in the medical line, they are leaving the country because of these same issues. We don't just have them in the academic, in fact, but it's worse with the university system. It's not just with the university system, but it is I don't know, maybe there's something that we have done to the government that they are so vindictive with the academics. But... Look, look at the structures, look at the school environment. You can't find this in civilized clients. The protesting issues, among others, include the removal of ASU from IFPIAs, unpaid and academic allowances, and the funding of public universities. Hassan Kohli, Trust TV News, Gwambe. A man of fire incident was recorded at the affluent treatment plant of the Dangote refinery in Lagos on Wednesday. The fire was immediately put out as firefighters and first responders swiftly rose to the occasion. Viral videos showed a thick plume of smoke billowing into the sky from the facility located at the Lekki Free Zone near Lagos. In a statement, a spokesman for the company, Anthony Chiajina, said operations at the refinery was not affected in any way. The $20 billion facility cited in Lagos and owned by the billionaire businessman Aliko Ngote commenced operations last December with 350,000 barrels a day. The refinery hopes to achieve its full capacity of 650,000 barrels per day at the end of the year. The refinery has begun the supply of diesel and aviation fuel to marketers in the country on petrol supply is expected to commence mid-July.
And despite some reported cases by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Kano State Government has debunked reports indicating that there is a cholera outbreak in the state. A public relations officer, Ministry of Health, Ibrahim Abdullahi, made this known on Wednesday. He said findings so far revealed that there is no cholera outbreak in Kano as no single case of the disease has been recorded in the state as of now. The NCDC had said about 1,141 cases were recorded between January and June 11, 2024, while 65 have been confirmed. As of June 12, 30 deaths were reported from 96 local government areas in 30 states where Kano has 13 confirmed cases and recorded one death. According to the agency, so far total deaths amount to 34 while confirmed cases are 1,288. We know now Nigeria's economy is facing a prolonged downturn that has continued to have a negative impact on businesses across the country. The situation is further exacerbated by the ongoing dispute between the federal government and labor leaders over the minimum wage issue. Habib Atajai says that Nigerians may have to tarry a little more as President Tinubu demands more time for wider consultation on the minimum wage demands. Here's a report. As the economic crisis deepens, businesses of all sizes are struggling to stay afloat. High inflation rates, currency devaluation, and fluctuating fuel prices have significantly increased operational costs, making it difficult for many enterprises to maintain profitability. We already have businesses living now. All of us are not interrogating where are our brothers and sisters working in those companies. Where are they? A figure below beyond what the private sector can pay might also lead to loss of jobs. Now we complain about insecurity. Where is, where is also so we have to put all those together. And a fundamental, lastly for me, on this minimum wage issue, a fundamental element in the in setting of national minimum wage that you cannot take away is the ability to pay. If you take out the ability to pay, then you have, you have just set your, a stage for crisis, basically. Adding to the economic woes is the contentious issue of the minimum wage. The federal government and the labor union leaders have been logged in negotiations, with unions demanding an increase to match the rising cost of living, while the government cites budgetary constraints as a barrier to meeting these demands. They must reach a compromise. And what's the compromise we are thinking as an economist? We are looking at between 100 and 150 thousand we're also looking at the backlash the negative uh, externalities that could follow that uh, change uh, the fact is that we must also look at uh, the uh, people and that are not working with the federal uh, government the private sector which is very very key so if government is paying hundred thousand can the private sector pay hundred thousand that is the question and that's why the trapatite uh, must come together Despite these challenges, some experts believe that resolving the minimum wage dispute could put a much-needed boost to the economy by increasing the consumer spending power. However, achieving a consensus remains a significant ordeal as the president has asked for time to widen the consultation net. The president's speech, which states that he is that all the uh, reforms that he's put in place is geared towards revamping the economy. My plea to all of us is to know that these are trying times. And it's not just about Nigeria. It's a global issue. So we must join hands. This is our country. We must see it so and join hands to believe that there will be some respite down the line. Let's continue to join forces and make it work. With Nigerians' businesses caught in a precarious situation of struggling to navigate the dual challenges of an economic downturn and an unresolved minimum wage issues, stakeholder says the resolution of these issues is critical for the stability and growth of the country's economy. Habibat Ajayi, Trust TV News, Abuja. The escalating prices of food items as well as some ingredients across markets in Nigeria have raised concerns among Nigerians who fear that such price increase will have a negative effect on the health status of Nigerians. In this report, Trust TV's Aisha Salu examines how this has led many households to opt for options with lesser dietary value. Here's a report. 
Central to a typical Nigerian kitchen are stews and soups with which Nigerians serve their meals. These soups and stews are made mainly from tomatoes, peppers, palm oil, vegetable oil and other such spices. However, the prices of these ingredients are rapidly going out of the reach of an average household due to food inflation, leaving many of these households seeking alternatives. Uh, the cost of living in Nigeria now is very, very expensive. It's unbearable. Now, before, it's fair, but now it's very much. We can't bear it anymore. The cost of living now is high. If you enter into the market to purchase your goods as normal, you cannot afford it now. It's good it's because it's useful. We use it for stew, so many things, yeah? So without it, we don't know how we are going to make our stew and other dishes, right? But right now it's very coarse and um, the amount of it is very, very high. So we don't really know how to, like right now I don't know how to price this because the cost is very high. Ahmed Mohammed is one of the many traders in Abuja. He's equally lamenting the high cost of accessing these produce as well as their price variations. He said this has resulted in low patronage for his business. And now the things they come down small. Before we had the selling this small basket for 20,000. So now I reduce small with the seller 16,000, 15,000. Fifty with the salon before fifteen thousand. Now with the salon thirteen twelve. Some people they buy, but uh, not be anybody they buy. Before the first one they buy like three basket. Now then they buy one and a half or one basket. The fifth one they buy like five basket before. Now they they buy only two basket because the thing too high. Despite their unaffordability and inaccessibility, their nutritional values cannot be downplayed as they form part of the classes of food that make up a healthy diet. Uh, veggies are very, very important for our health and part of uh, the veggies is part of the adequate diet we are talking about. What we mean by adequate diet is that the, food, the five classes of food should be included and veggies are those nutrients that give immunity to the body. They give, the, they give our vitamins and minerals, vegetables. Most of our soups are either stew, okra, and this sawanity food with thickness, adding more carbohydrate to it. So vegetable is okay because it gives you the vitamins and minerals needed. Alternatively, households are forced to buy food ingredients with lesser quality, which are relatively more affordable. Some people, the people that they buy uh, this small, small flat. So now, now budget they the fine. Then the fine, that budget, that one, they, one is when it's for small. Now down, then they take manage. So anything you want to do, if you are, if you have money, that you have been spending that kind of that living, formally. But where the situation will rent for you to cut down your goods to the sizes, you have to minimize everything surrounding you. If I can to take care of your children, your school fees, after you fix, the next day is your feeding. In today's Nigeria, what was typically a go-to food option for a sizable number of Nigerians is slowly becoming a luxury dish for those below the middle class. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And in business news, following the start of operations at the Dangote refinery, the airline's operators of Nigeria has confirmed a reduction in the price of aviation fuel in the country. This development was achieved after the association met with the management team of the Dangote Group to discuss bottlenecks making the important commodity expensive with a backlash of increased airfares. Since the end of the fuel subsidy regime in the country over a year ago, the prices of all petroleum products have skyrocketed. In February, airline operators lamented the skyrocketing price of aviation fuel, describing the development as critical and requiring immediate government intervention to prevent the collapse of their operations. The airlines also said that the fluctuation in forex rates and the soaring cost of aviation fuel, which was 1,300 per liter at that time, disrupted operational planning and stability within the aviation sector. In April, Dangote announced a price reduction for diesel and aviation fuel. According to Dangote, aviation was slashed to 940 naira per litre. And away from Nigeria, the Kenyan president, William Ruto, has withdrawn a bill to raise taxes a day after violent protests erupted 
around the country following its approval by parliament. Ruto said he would not sign the finance bill after violent clashes between police and protesters at the Kenya. We do live within our means, respecting the very loud message that is coming from the people of Kenya. Quote and unquote. The move will be considered to be a victory for the weak old protest movement that grew from online condemnations of tax increases into mass rallies demanding a political overhaul and the most serious crisis of Ruto's two-year-old presidency. Following the passage of the bill, the country witnessed widespread expression of dissatisfaction with the bill as passed, regrettably resulting in the loss of life, destruction of property, and disintegration of constitutional institutions. On my own behalf, and on behalf of these members and many other Kenyans, I send my condolences to the families of those who lost their loved ones in this very unfortunate manner. Consequently, having reflected on the continuing conversation around the content of the Finance Bill 2024, and listening keenly to the people of Kenya who have said loudly that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024, I concede, and therefore, I will not sign the 2024 Finance Bill, and it shall subsequently be with a drone, and I have agreed with these members that that becomes our collective position. And to developments in the world of sport, Plato United have announced a three-week break for players and officials of the club following the end of the 2023-2024 season. General Manager of the club, Habila Hosea Mutla, made the announcement during a meeting with the players and technical team. Mutla thanked them for their performances, which ensured the team placed fifth at the end of the season, but expressed dissatisfaction at the team's inability to secure a continental spot. He also appreciated members of the technical crew for their invaluable efforts during the season. The Joss Club lost 2-0 to Ayimba in the final game of the season. Meanwhile, Plato United have announced the appointment of Ibrahim Tito as the new team manager of the club. And that wraps up the news update at this hour. Do not forget to follow us across all of our social platforms and catch our live stream on YouTube for more news programs and documentaries. My name is Sagi O'Brien. Thanks for watching.